Coming up on LSU Sports Showtime, the baseball team finally gets to break in the new Alec Box Stadium this weekend. We'll tell you how the season looks to shape up for the Tigers. Plus, Tasman Mitchell and company were down 18 points in the first half to Arkansas. We'll tell you if the Tigers could come back and steal a victory in Fayetteville. And later, we hit the rec tennis course with all the intramural basketball action from last night. All that and your Athletes of the Week. Sports Showtime starts now. Welcome to Sports Showtime, your source for everything LSU Athletics. I'm Brian Tompkins. And I'm Mary Claire Palmer. The men's basketball team was on the road last night against Arkansas. But first, tomorrow's opening day for the baseball team in the new Alec Box Stadium. A new stadium, a number one ranking, and the attention of a rejuvenated fan base all start tomorrow night for the LSU baseball team as they take on Villanova. Reporter Troy Galden was at the team's media day and has a preview of this year's squad. The Tigers start the season off tomorrow night in a brand new state-of-the-art stadium, but some players think the stadium is too nice. I'm just ready for people to get in here and dirty it up, throw some cups and spill some stuff here, just break it in and, you know, have some wear to it. The LSU baseball team returns eight starters in the batting order, but they will have to replace last year's NCAA home run leading hitter, Matt Clark. One of the guys stepping up this year, Chad Jones, is known more on the football field than on the baseball diamond. Guy's a freak, you know, a freak of nature, but he's big, he's strong, you know, he's fast, and, uh, he's, he's my good friend too, you know, he's a great guy, he's a great teammate. Our outfield, I think it's one of the best in, uh, you know, in baseball right now, you know, especially if we had Chad out there, there's, you know, I don't, I don't see any team being faster. The LSU Tiger baseball team starts a new season in a new stadium, ranked as number one in both major polls this season, as they bring back eight stars from the team's batting lineup, but they do not bring back any starting weekend pitchers. Coach Paul Maneri is very confident that someone will step up into that role. That's going to be the, the, the key to our season is going to be how our pitching does. We know we're going to have a good lineup if our pitching gives us a chance to win games. The Tigers look for their experience to lead them to another College World Series this season as they bring in 11 newcomers to help out. And our kids had a lot of good experience last year, so hopefully it's going to show them what, they, what it takes to win and, and to succeed at a high level. Senior pitcher Lewis Coleman is scheduled to start the season off for the Tigers as they take on Villanova tomorrow night. Reporting for Sports Showtime, I'm Troy Golden. Student tickets for tomorrow night's game will be issued starting at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We will also have more analysis of this year's baseball team later on in the show. Marcus Thornton improved on his resume for SEC Player of the Year last night as he led the 23rd ranked LSU men's basketball team to a slim victory over the Arkansas Razorbacks. It was the 10th consecutive SEC win for the Tigers, but the game didn't begin all that well for them. They had to overcome an 18-point first-half deficit in order to take down the pesky Razorbacks in Bud Walton Arena. Ignited by a Marcus Thornton three-pointer, LSU utilized a 16-4 run during the final five minutes of the first half to pull in six at intermission. In the second half, a big three-pointer by Terry Martin helped the Tigers scrap their way back into the contest, and they went on to win 72-69. LSU returns to action on Saturday when they host Auburn at 7 in the PMAC. With first-year head coach Trent Johnson's team on top of the SEC, our own Tim Zimmer went around campus to see if students expected this kind of turnaround in such a short time. I wasn't expecting it to be, them to be this good, but I expected them to possibly win the SEC West, but I was wondering about how our depth would hurt us or not. Uh, no, I didn't. I knew Trent Johnson would do a lot better than John Brady, but I wasn't expecting this. I would have been happy with just eight wins, probably. So. Um... No, I mean I knew there was like high expectations for the season, but um, 
be that high. I definitely think they'll win the SEC, but overall, I don't, I don't think they're, they're going to win. Everybody was, I guess, had high expectations and everything, and everybody was really excited about having a new coach. So uh, I'm kind of, I got to say, I'm kind of surprised. I think, I think they should at least get in. I don't know how well they'll do in the NCAA tournament, but I, I think they'll make it. Under the leadership of Coach Johnson, the Tigers are currently 22-4. and four. This time last season, under interim head coach Butch Pierre, the men's basketball team was 10-16. and 16. She's the current national title holder in the vault. She's fifth in the national all-around rankings. Sports Showtime's Alex White has an inside look into the life of the small but powerful gymnast Susan Jackson. Well, Ashley Claire Kearney has been capturing most of the attention from LSU Gymnastics fans this season, another leader has also been a solid and reliable member of the lineup for the Tigers, and that is junior standout Susan Jackson. Susan's level of excellence and ability is no accident, as Susan competed at the highest level possible in amateur gymnastics, the international elite level, during her high school years. While there are many perks of being at that level of gymnastics for Susan, life was definitely not normal and some sacrifices had to be made along the way. I was homeschooled from 6th grade to 11th grade, and um, I was constantly in the gym, didn't go to a single prom, went to one homecoming, you know, it was just, I was traveling all the time, um, so it was just, it was really different. With years of rigorous training behind her, Susan has definitely seen the benefits of being at the elite level pay off in her college gymnastics career. With solid performances of difficult routines each week, as well as many appearances on the victory stand, including her national title on the vault last season. Yeah, training at an elite definitely helped because I was able to, you know, pull what I used to do and what was so, like, I was used to doing back from whenever I was elite. Um, I was just able to, like, you know, pull it out and ended up being okay. So far this season, Susan has been nothing short of spectacular for the Tigers. She's ranked fifth nationally in the all-around, just behind teammate Ashley Claire Kearney, and has five event titles with one all-around title as well. After this season concludes for the Tigers, Claire Kearney will have left, leaving Susan as the top Tiger on the team. While Susan will be a perfectly capable leader, the team won't be able to find the same level of success they have recently experienced without someone else stepping up to lead as well. Maybe one of the sophomores this year, maybe one of the freshmen coming in, you know? Maybe somebody will step up and help out and, yeah, help be the leader. With about two months left in the season, Susan and the rest of the Tiger gymnasts are getting ready for another run at the Super 6 and a possible national title. With Jackson at the helm, the Tigers are sure to be at their very best by season's end and do the Tiger Nation proud. For Sports Showtime, I'm Alex White. You can check out Susan and the rest of the gymnastics team this Friday at the PMAC.